Hey, Mugu, Mugu. Hey, Sam, what's going on? If I can get this uh, camera to aim down a little bit. It's just a little bit. Like, I think the cable weighs it down funny. I don't know. Go up a little bit. It's either cut off my hair or I'd rather have you see my hands. I'm going to need a lot of room for uh, writing stuff too. Barone, what's going on? Bruce, good to see you. We have one administrator. Administrators. Uh oh. Text from the missus. What's going on? Bob Schumann. Peroni. Uh, hey, Zeph. I didn't know you do live chat. chat. Well, kind of kind of like a live chat. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm live chatting with my wife right now. Yeah, we're, uh, yeah, I do my live stream every Monday. I try to go every Monday, 9 a.m. California time, Pacific Standard Time, which would be noon on the East Coast. I think it's like uh, five o'clock in England. Sorry, my glasses are dirty. And I'm gonna clean off my glasses. So we're gonna talk about chord names and we're gonna get a lot of theory in here. I figured it's time for a refresher course. Talk about why chords are called what they're called, what's a 13th chord and that kind of stuff. Um, and I have some answers to why's and then there's some unknown answers um, or there's some questions I don't know the answer to um, for example why is why is it a set if a like if I were to make a, a seventh chord in the key of C starting on C I'd end up with a major seventh why don't we call it a seventh chord and then call the the G the flat the sep, uh, the C with a flat B a B flat why don't we call that a dominant seventh? Well, we do call it a dominant seventh, but the symbol for that would be a just C7. Now, I have seen C major seven written C7 before. Um, not in a long time, but what people would do is they would put a line. Um, uh, they put a line through the seven and... Um, Um, they put a, you know seven with a line through it and that was supposed to tell you that it was a major seven and then there would be C7 with no line through it and that was supposed to be a dominant seventh there's major seven there's dominant seventh huge difference when you're playing down a song with a band you know that's, there's a big difference between a major seventh and a dominant seventh. But um, so I, I, that I don't know the answer to why. Well, I, I have a guess. I have a guess. Um, and it probably goes back to not that far. Um, I'm trying to think of if I've ever seen charts from the 40s. I have seen charts from the 40s because I used to play in a band, a big band called the Ashley Williams Orchestra. And a lot of those charts we had were really old. Um, and uh, one of the guys, uh, the trumpet players actually in the band, well, a couple of players in that band, I was 
I was pretty young. I started playing in that band when I was like 27, something like that. Um, and one of the um, horn players, a couple of the horn players, played in Billy May's orchestra. Um, so there were some, there were several Billy May charts in there. And so there were some weird. Uh, yeah, that may have been where I saw that slat, the seven with a line through it. I don't even know if I can make that symbol um, in, with any kind of. Uh, key command or anything. Hey, Matthew, what's going on? Yeah, I, I use the triangle. Yeah, I definitely use the triangle for major sevenths because I don't want to write M-A-J. Um, and the way you find major seven, it's option or alt on your keyboard, alt J. And that gets you the triangle generally. In Mac, it does. I don't know about uh, PCs, but um, we're going to talk about that in a second, too. So, hey, good morning from Austin. Mad musician, magician. <laughs> Wait, you're not, oh, that's not Andrew, is it? <laughs> yeah, I'm not going to do any magic. My friend Andrew Gerard is very good at magic, and he's very good guitar. So I was like, Wait, is that Andrew? I, Andrew has been on here. Andrew had a, a, a show in Vegas, I think, where he hypnotized 100 people on stage at the same time. It was like crazy. Uh, but I didn't know Andrew back then. I've, I've known Andrew more recently. In fact, I met Andrew through YouTube. He was a, a, a subscriber, and uh, he messaged me. And um, Hey, thank you, Matthew. All right. God bless you. So... What, what we're going to do is we're going to start with the, the simplest thing I can th think of in music, and that's a C major scale. I've got a piano right here. Well, maybe I do. Oh, did the stupid keyboard not? Oh, I bet you um, I got my... Yeah, it did that thing. Okay, well... I'm not going to reboot because that means leaving the live stream. So it's not that critical for me to have a piano. It would be nice, uh, but but a, if you start with a with, with a C major scale, and um, let me uh, let me just pull up a a new text thing here. Boom. Okay. And we're going to go C, D, E, F, G, A, B, C, all right? And I'm going to go down below. So sadly, it's not going to, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. It's not going to line up, okay? I, I, wish, I wish it would, um, but there's no way to really get that to line up, and that's not going to work over there because it's too white. So let's go with a different color. Select font. Can I choose a color? I do not see a color option. All right. Be that way. Hmm. All right. So... You can see we got here, put, <laughs> put it right there. All right. Uh, I'm real tempted to try to create something that looks a little better than that and then do a screen grab. Why don't I do that? I think that'll work better. So uh, let me delete this. But basically what you can do, you can do this. If you've got a piece of paper right now, you can write down... Um, You can write down, I should have checked them, I should have checked the um, audio before I got online, sorry about that. Um, write down C, D, E, F, G, A, B, C, and then write it again, but just start C and then D, E, F, G, A, B, C, so you have two octaves of a C major scale. Actually, it'd be really good if you did write this down, because I think 
I think, again, I always talk about this, how we all learn different ways. Um, sometimes, like, what, there's five different ways to learn. We homeschooled, and all three of our kids were different, and that was the beauty of homeschooling. You could kind of cater on. Alex is a very hands-on kid, okay? And so this is kind of a hands-on way of, 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 the, of absorbing some information is to write it out. Um, the other thing, um, for me, it takes, I have to learn it all five ways <laughs> to get it into my thick skull, okay? So if you can write uh, C, D, E, F, G, A, B, C, D, E, F, G, A, B, C, like that, and then below it write one, two, three, four, see, I'm going to have to, how am I going to do this? I want, I guess I have to create a stupid table. I hate doing tables. Um, what is it, 13 total? All right. And then I don't want any colors or anything like that. Layouts. Text color, yeah. I see. Here we go. No fill. Oh, okay, all of these. There we go. There we go. All right. Well, this this will kind of work. <laughs> it's so. Uh, it's it's a, it's an episode of CSI, and you're watching me like sit on a computer. Let's see if this works. C, D, E, F, G, A, B, C. No. No, I did this not quite. There we go. All right. Oh, you know what? I want all of them bolded, too. Let's do that. All right. All right, and then I'm going to put in one, two, three, Not really going to get to 14 and 15, but you get the idea here in a second. All right, now can I squish this up a little bit now? I'll just leave it like it is. So exciting. Aren't you glad you tuned in? <laughs> okay. Let's see if we can just drag this right on here. Look at that. Oh, it didn't let me do it. Oh, you're so bad. Okay. Because it changed location. That's what happened. And we'll see. Desktop. There it is. Boom. All right. So now we have this. There we go. See, now you can kind of see it. It's just not very big. Um, let's see. Okay. But you see what I'm going for here, right? And when, what what I what I would love for you all to do is, um, if we were to make triads, um, and this is when I'm teaching triad theory, I write out two octaves of, of C major scale, and super again, it's super easy to see on piano. It's all you know every other white key for three keys, and you just keep going up and you create these. But you could do that here by looking at the, the C, D, E, F, G. Okay, a triad would be C, E, G. In other words, one, three, five. It's perfect right now because when we're looking at C, E, G, it actually says right below one, three, five. When we go up to the next note in the scale, the D, um, that's going to be the two chord. 
and that's going to be D F A and D F A. It's the one three five of that two chord, but here it's called two four six. But we're don't worry about that. Um, but I want you to memorize the sounds of all those. I want you to memorize all all of the triads in the key of C by name um, and by letter name. So C E G is the first one. The second one the the two chord, okay, the the chord or the triad built on the second note in the scale will be D F A, and it's easy to see when you look here. You can just skip a letter and you get your triad, and then E G B, F A C, G B D A C E B D F, and then C E G. Okay, that's part of the reason why I do two octaves, so you don't have to like go okay. G, B, and then what's, then C, then what's after, you have to go backwards. No, you don't have to do it. When you have it written out like this, you can, you can go right through it. So these are the, it's uh, C, E, G, D, F, A, um, and then uh, E, G, B, F, A, C, G, B, D, A, C, E, and B, D, F, okay? And some of these are going to be, um, major triads, some of them are going to be minor triads, and BDF is a diminished triad, all right? Um, this is real important. The reason I want you to memorize these, just be able to say them really fast, FAC, GBD, ACE, BDF, that kind of thing, because all triads from this point on are going to use these letters, and they're going to be these letters. So, for example, D minor is DFA. D major, ah, now i gotta, I got to move this up. Ah, not that. Not the screen. There we go. Okay. This software is kind of lame, in my opinion. This OBS. I would love to find a better one. Um, but if you want D major, then you have an F sharp. I'm not going to talk about necessarily right now the theory about these different chords. But, but what letters do we have in that D major? We have D... F sharp and A. So there's still an F letter in it. Now it's F sharp, but there's still an F. So you know that if you're if you're analyzing or making triads and you don't have, if you're making some kind of D triad, whether it be uh, D sharp, just take D up a fret. That would be, uh, now here we're gonna get, it's gonna get funny, but it's gonna be D sharp, F double sharp, and uh, A double, or A sharp. Um, not, not very common chord though, D sharp. Usually we would say E flat. That's much more common of a triad than D sharp. Um, but if we go to D, say D, D flat, that's a fairly common triad. I'm just playing uh, on the uh, sixth fret, fourth, third, and second string. All right. That's a very, uh, you know, fairly common triad. If I play that's, and that would be D flat, F, and A flat, D, okay, so D flat, F, and A flat. All right, if I make that minor, it's not D flat, E, and A flat. Now, I am actually playing an E, but you would call that F flat. That way you keep that triad figure in the name and in the description of the chord. Uh, D, F, A. You still have a D, F, A. It's D flat, F flat, and A flat, but you still have D, F, A. All right, does that make sense? So that's why I kind of want you to memorize the, those, the sounds of those. Uh, that's not necessarily going to apply a lot to what we're going to talk about. Um, <clears throat> but when we talk about a C a triad, we just say C, right? So when it, it says C on the chart, you actually have C, E, G. So it's kind of shorthand for having to say, oh yeah, play C, E, G. Play those three notes, okay? Um, just play C chord and you, you should be good. So what chord should I play? Play C. There you go. So it's it's much easier than saying that. So yeah, sometimes I would see major after that. Again, this goes way back. Back to the 60s, I might have seen something that said, C major, um, M-A-J, or gosh, I can't imagine anybody would write out the full word major, but it probably happened. And a lot of times people would write C capital M. Um, uh, 
Oh, it's fine. I can't add it. I mean, I'd have to redo it, but this it's fine. It starts on a C, ends on a C, so we can kind of assume it's key of C, Bruce. Um, but the... Um, What was I saying? Sorry, I got sidetracked. Bruce, Bruce, you distracted me. <laughs> Squirrel. Uh, let's see. Oh, so yeah. Some sometimes I would see C ma oops, C major. Okay, C capital M. But hey, knees. Um, but that would be kind of you know that's just oh too much work. A lot of times when you're doing charts, a lot of times when I'm doing charts. I've got the music playing and I'm writing the chords down as fast as I can. I'll print up, like I'll make all the measures and it's like, okay, C chord, okay, went to G, went to, you know, I'm not gonna write C major, oh, and it goes to, yeah, you know, I can't, you don't have time. So shorthand is handy all the time, but especially when you're, when you're transcribing music. So I would, for C major, you just use C, that's it, boom, done. For C minor, then you use C and a small m. Um, I've seen, People write C M I N, you know that's just but totally unnecessary. Um, overkill, to you know it might be someone who's really uh, O C D or something, and they like they're afraid that C little M would be confused for C major. Um, but that's probably because they write C major. <laughs> so you know if you just keep it simple and write C, um, you know in a jazz context you're not going to see the minor you're not going to see triad so much but but again with c we've got c e g that's what makes a c chord now when we're, we're going to continue to add notes to the to the triad so it's no longer going to be a triad we're going to end up with four notes the next note after g would be b so we'd have c e g b all right and this is where we're going to get into seventh chords and what that is, is uh, you, you would think that shorthand of just C for the triad would continue to C with a B, a C triad with a B added, and you just say C7. The problem is C7 has over time, and I'm going to explain why I think this is, but C7 equals C, E, G, B flat. All right. So to get this, to get this C, let's make a point them out. C, E, G, B. Oh, <laughs> my hand's getting further away. That's funny. B uh, chord. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Leave no detail behind. Yeah. It's it's. But some details are completely unnecessary. Okay, but if you were to do that, if you were to go C, E, G, B, then that would be C major seven, okay? I've seen it written that way. I've seen it written C capital M seven. Oops, sorry. <laughs> C, M seven, there we go. Um, I've also seen it, I write it C with a triangle seven. And the way, again, the way you make a triangle is Alt J, I think, Triangle also stands for delta, right? The delta symbol, which is a, which is kind of a symbol for money. It's a symbol for, because uh, it's on the back of the dollar bill. Um, it's also a symbol for, you know, all sorts of like secret occults and secret societies and stuff. Um, and that's probably why that band was called Alt J. Actually, a pretty cool band. But there's a band called Alt J, and I didn't think about it. I didn't understand what that meant until I discovered that Alt-J is the triangle, a.k.a. the delta sign. Uh, but for me, that's my shorthand uh, for major seven, okay? So if we were to continue down that path, we have C, E, G, B. We have a C major seven. If we were to add that D, okay, so now we have C, E, G, B, D. That would be C major nine, all right? Uh, and I'm not really going to get into showing you these chords necessarily, but C major 7, if you play C and take off your first finger, okay? But we are going to get into, and I, I, I'll, show, I'll be happily, happy to show you, um, we are going to get into the fact that eventually if you run the numbers here, 
all right if we go if we get up to C major 13 you're gonna realize there's seven notes in that chord and we only have six strings so what the heck right well uh, probably my go-to C major ninth C major 9 is this one and you'll know so I'm, I'm playing the second finger on the C on the third fret of the fifth string okay first finger on the E so I have a root I have the C and I have the E and then I'm gonna put my pinky on that B up here on the fourth fret of the third string okay this, this is a little bit of a difficult chord to play but, but you can see that major seventh there there's our B and then if I put my sec, uh, third finger on the second fret third string or uh, sorry second third fret of the second st string yeah okay so basically what I'm doing is nothing and then three two four three not X okay so let me write that out here's here's what I'm playing C for C major nine oops all right I'm playing three two four three and then X you could play that top string open but you don't want to necessarily because you want to be able to have a movable major ninth chord so the root is the C so this is B major nine C major nine C, ma C sharp major nine it's a beautiful chord D major nine E flat major nine F major nine G major nine A major nine it's just It sounds great it's a beautiful chord and I love this voicing but there is no G in here there's no fifth that's okay um, even on even piano players wouldn't necessarily play the fifth in a, in a major ninth chord uh, you start yet everybody not just guitar players because we're limited by having six strings um, everybody will tend to get rid of, of, of uh, notes now the next chord is would be C major 11 okay now this is one of those chords I'm going to call more of a theoretical chord so C alt J 11 okay it's going to be C D I'm sorry C E G B um, D and we're good so far and then F not a common chord I don't I don't think I've ever heard this chord um, uh, let me let me it, because I I can't get this F note in here, but here's my C major. I'm gonna do, I'm gonna move it, transpose it down a half step. So I'm gonna play that C major ninth chord. I'm gonna play here at B major ninth with that E on top. I can't think if I've ever heard that chord until this very moment. Yeah, this is this, uh, Kathy or Holly. This is a very pretty chord. Yeah, um, and again. Anytime you have to learn a new chord, do kind of this thing where you take your hand off, put it on. It, it actually, if you just throw your fingers on the fretboard like this, just, just like that, <laughs> it almost lit, lines up to be, a, you know, it's pretty close. But having that pinky up there and the third finger tucked down here makes it a little difficult. Um, and then what, what's always good, in fact, I want to do a... a I've got all these ideas for short video YouTube videos. I should start to do some of those. Um, I think you can monetize the YouTube shorts. Anyway, um, they're trying to compete with uh, TikTok, I think, and Instagram. But um, I have like this this little exercise I like to do. Where I reverse position of the of, uh, you know of the pinky and the first finger and this is this is C major 9 and this is D over C and it's a really pretty nice little exercise it's almost Brazilian to D over C but anyway um, so so that's kind of but yeah one of the, like I said always just take your hand off make the chord take your hand off make the chord take your hand off 
but it is, it is a fun one. You notice that I'm playing it with my fingers. I can strum it, but I have to mute strings too. So that adds a level of, of complexity to it when you have to like deaden the first string and, and the bottom string. But when you're playing jazz, you're kind of used to that. But if I move this down a fret, I get to B major nine, and then I can take B major nine and add that seven. So now I have a B major, I'm sorry, add that 11, and I can have B major 11. John, that's one way of looking at it, yeah. We're gonna talk about that. And I just, like I said, I, I, I don't like that chord. I've never used it never been asked to play it so C major 11 is not common C major 13th is okay um, and again with this this B major 11 that I played I didn't have a fifth in there I had a B I had a D sharp that's the root in the third I had a, um, an A sharp which is the seventh I had a C sharp which is the ninth and then I had an E natural which is the the, the 11th okay hey Catherine um, uh, well work yeah I, I, I'm, I'm freelance, so when you say too much work, I'm like, oh, that's good. But then for some people, they're like salaried, and they're like, no, not good. Um, so, so yeah, so that so that's uncommon. But um, C major, a, thir a major thirteenth chord is not uncommon. Okay, now let's C major thirteen. Okay, I'm gonna do my little all J thing here. That would be technically C E G B D F A, but not really. Okay, mostly what you want for one thing, if there's a if there's a number in it, you got to have it. So there's a 13 in it. So we got up to the 13, and we see that A. There's got to be an A in it. All right. Um, it says has the major has the triangle. That means we got to have uh, the major seventh in there because that's kind of what that's implying. So we got to have the B. So we have the A and the B. And um, let's see, we, we're gonna have to, ha we don't necessarily have to have the C, uh, but we should definitely have the third, which gives it a major or minor tonality. So we need an E. And uh, kind of nice, if you're gonna do a 13th, people wanna hear that ninth in there, all right? So really, the notes we need mainly for a C major 13th, and the re one of the reasons why we don't need the C, all right? Although I can add it in there, I'll show you. Um, but the, one of the reasons we don't need the C note is um, mainly because uh, the bass player is playing that, right? So we can kind of get away with E, B, D, and A for our tonality, all right? So in fact, I think if I just play those notes on the guitar right now, I end up with this, right? There's my third, my E, there's the seventh, there's the ninth, and there's the thirteenth. Can't really, can't really get that. Now, another major thirteenth would be the, this. I might do something like, and now I am adding the C, but this is the B, which is the seventh, the E, which is the third, the A, which is the thirteenth, and the and the um, D, which is the ninth. It's kind of a nice. Oh, John, God bless you. Um, there's that's kind of a cool chord. You know, you can get them over if you want. It's a really pretty chord, actually. Uh, this one, sadly, is nice. Never really used that. I always kind of go to this one if I have to. Um, I mean, there's something like this that's kind of hard uh, but there's the B D E and oh wait I have two B's oh no this is easier yeah I like this one let me let me write this one out for you now it's not easy this is a pro chord here C alt J 13 and there, again there's no fifth and there's no 11th in here and that's okay because we don't want to hear the 11th and the fifth is unnecessary. Fifth kind of muddies things up sometimes. Okay, so I did, what fret am I at? Uh, eight, nothing, 
9755, five, I think. Yeah. That's a really nice chord. And it's got that it's got that 13 on top, which is um, which makes it kind of extra special. Alright? Yeah, but that's a hard one. An easier one, I might just use begin. If you got a bass player, you could do something like this. C 13. You could do something like XX, and then what is this? Um, sorry, this is going to be kind of weird because it's got two tens in it. It's going to look like 9910. <laughs> it's like that chord's impossible to play. <laughs> so, um, but yeah, and it's it's real easy to grab. So that, like, if you wanted A major ninth, uh, if you want to hear what it sounds like, play this uh, open A. Then six six seven seven, and you get a good, real good sense of what a, a major thirteenth chord sounds like. Now I kind of told you that I wasn't going to show you chords, but I kind of can't help it because I'm I want you to under, not only understand the naming of chords, um, but um, you know the sonic qualities and the use of the chords. I, again, my most favorite compliment that I get is uh, that I don't teach you how to play music. I teach you how to make music, which is kind of what I'm doing here, all right? Let's... Yeah, it's... like a C minor pentatonic over that or sorry C sharp minor pentatonic or even you could play now the more common 11 chord so if we're in a major context with with regards to C okay we have so we have a an E and a B okay um, the more common would be D major, I'm sorry, C major 9 uh, sharp 11, or add sharp 11. Okay, so remember our C major 9 chord that I taught you? Right? It's up there a ways, but if you lay down your first finger and get that F sharp, now you, you're, you've got, um, and so that would be... So if we're in a Lydian, if we're thinking Lydian wise, then yes, the 11th is a beautiful and usable uh, tone. So C, what this would be called would be C major, generally major nine. I, what I would do is I would put in parentheses sharp 11, okay? Some might say, and if you're gonna do a complex chord like this, then, then you're, you're you're gonna have to write out stuff. <laughs> so there is no, there is less shorthand um, for these kind of chords. And so you're just stuck with having to write things out. Uh, but my voice in that I just used just now, so you have it, it's gonna be right here, um, was three, two, four, three, two, like that, all right? So I gave you two different ways to call this, um, to, what to call it, but, but we're taking that F and going up, all right? It's like here, we had the B uh, major 11. Just not a usable chord. Just a, too much rubbing going on in there. But boom, you sharp that 11 and it's just magic. No, you do not call it a sus4. A sus4 would be an F, so that would totally throw everyone off. Um, yeah, we're going to talk about that, Sam. Yeah, it's your your adding sharp. Now, if it were just a C with an F sharp in it, you still can't call that a sus four. Um, if, for example, it's a little easier to see with a D chord. Here's D. Here's D sus or sus four. Sus D sus is shorthand for sus four. 
If you put D sus, everybody knows that it's sus4. Okay, we're going to talk about this one in a second. But if you want D sharp with a sharp 11, I probably would put... Oh, we got someone to get rid of here. Um, I would probably put D and in parentheses sharp 11 or add sharp 11. I wouldn't say sharp 4. You could. Um, you could sh say sharp 4. Wouldn't be incorrect. Another, you could do it a couple different ways. You go here and you could reach out and grab this G sharp here, or you could reach down and grab the G sharp there. It's a very pretty chord, very dramatic chord. Again, if I had my piano, I'd be playing it on piano. So, so yeah. So, the if it's only an eleven, uh, you're only adding a four, a, a version of the fourth um, in the key of C, for example. Um, if you C sus four, you have to get both of those E's up to F. If you want C sharp four, let's see, how would I do that? Like, you could also call that C major with a flat five, though, right? Um, anyway, I don't want to get too deep in the weeds here. Um, so, yeah, so that B major 11 was bad, but the B major 9 with a sharp 11 is good. Okay, and so that's because the, the sharp 11 it doesn't occur naturally here. You have to kind of point it out. You have to call it out. And so when we did the C major with a sharp 11 that one works much like I said that one is much more usable much that's a far more common chord than um, C major 11 would be C major 9 sharp 11 would be far more common I've never seen the other C major 11 I mean maybe man. and I, I think I think the maybe I've seen it but it was a it was a mistake um, they really what they really wanted was kind of a C11 chord, and we're going to talk about that, which is kind of what um, John was talking about a second ago, was that 11th chord. Uh, where, where, where was your comment, John? Yeah, so the 11th chords are played, flat 7th chord extension, yeah. But see, here's the thing. Um, what I said was um, C major 11. So that would be different. C11 and C major 11 are going to be different. Again, we're, we're just about to get to that part, okay? So, um, so we've got our C two octave C scale. And then what we want to do, what I'm going to do is I'm going to change a couple things. A screenshot excellent All right. oh oh funny well what the heck no that's not what I want I thought I just did a screenshot. Now it's going to go away. Okay. Oh, I see what happened. Okay, hold on. Ha, there it is. That's funny. All right. All right. So I'm, I basically did the same thing. But I flatted the seventh. Okay. So this is the. So this is basically we have now a, a mixolydian scale. We're not basically, it is a C mixolydian scale. And this is how we're going to make our seventh chords. Um, so C7, C9, C11, 
C13 are all going to be built on this scale. Now, if you look at the triad, CEG, it's nothing's changed there. So we still have a major tonality, but it's a dominant major tonality. Now, here's my thinking, and, and see, see if you agree with me, um, but C7 is going to be CEG B flat. All right. My thinking of why we call C dominant 7 C7 in normal notation. It's very, very common. I mean, I've seen C D O M seven before, but again, that was a while ago. And you know, here's the deal. I don't think you would find chord di chord notation a hundred years ago in music. I just don't think everybody read music so you you would write I mean I got music for guitar that was literally often in fact in in the Ashley Williams orchestra there were some of those old charts that had all the notes written out that they want me to play not the chord names I had to go through the charts and write the chord names on them because I couldn't quite sight read stacked chords that fast so I had to go and analyze them go okay that's a C major seven Okay, that's a D minor seven with a flat five, and I'd write that stuff out there. Um, and so, um, so the so the the notation for the for chords is a relatively new thing. I would say it's probably 50, 60, 70 years old, um, and that kind of was a byproduct of like lyric and chord charts or big band simplifications or what we call lead sheets, and lead sheets would have the melody and the chords written on it and you could take that and that's what a real book is and you could take that and immediately just go oh okay i can run with that i have the melody i have the chords so i can either play chords or i can play you know whatever you could do the combine i could combine them together into a chord melody so we can talk about that sometime uh, that would be interesting to talk about making chord melodies. Um, and uh, so the um, so the so here's the thing. Uh, so songs would often be. The only time you would have a seventh chord, in so many like folk songs, like Bob Dylan songs or Mama's, uh, no, uh, Peter Paul and Mary or Pete Seeger tunes, would and even country tunes and you know Western tunes, uh, country and Western songs. The only time you would have a seventh chord would be on the five chord. So I think the shorthand developed that a seven meant the five chord. If it said you know B seven, it was that you would add a seven to the five chord. You know, very rarely would you play. Would you play a, a seventh on the four chord when you're doing like a, a folk tune, or on the or on the on the one chord? You know, you wouldn't. They wouldn't do that. So it was usually just simple E triad, A triad, E triad, and then you could go to B. And, it, and this may, the B may be the 100% reason why we have seventh means dominant instead of major. Uh, because nobody wanted to play a B chord, right? They go, oh, forget it. I'll just play a B7. <laughs> that works, yeah. And it sets up. And B, you know, that tritone that's in the seventh, uh, the dominant seventh chord, creates tension that wants to go to the one chord, right? Play these two notes with me. D sharp, which is first fret on the D string. Uh, fourth string, and then second fret on the G string, which is an A. We have a D sharp and an A. That's a tritone, so the, or, or diminished fifth, also called the devil's tone. And that D sharp wants to go up to E, and that A wants to go, go down to G sharp, and we end up with a, a really some tension with a re strong resolution to the one chord, five one. That's what's happening within that harmony there so I, I, I'm suspicious I'm, I'm suspecting that the b7 is the reason why um, we have it and I've seen b7 written as B dominant 7 but it's been a very very long time 
it would be called a an augmented fourth. So we're going to talk about interval theory. Um, so for c to e is a so c to d is a major second. C to E is a major third. Okay, I'm going to skip something. I'm going to go C to A. That's a major, a major sixth. C to B is a major seventh. Okay, we're getting it into, into music theory now. All right, you hear that? C D is major second. C E is major third. C A is major sixth. C to B is major seventh. All right. Well, here's the thing. It's perfect we got this chart. Now, I'm looking at the top chart, okay? Not the one with the B flat in it, the one with the B in it on the top there. If we go D, so we went C to D, that's a major second. <laughs> Sorry. I'm talking to you like you're three-year-olds. Major second. Wait, Kathy's here, right? Can I get up in Kathy's face? She's watching on the giant TV. All right. If we go D up to C, all right, so if we go D down to C, that's still a major second. But if we go D to E, F, G, boo, 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 all up to C, you know what that is? Oh, and there won't be a quiz on this, okay? But just bear with me, because you're going to understand something, <laughs> whether, you, whether you want to or not. Uh, so D to C is a minor seventh, okay? A minor seventh. So if I play... D to C. In fact, you can even see it if I'm playing a minor seventh chord. You can see that D to C right in the right in the middle of it. Um, but C to D, that's a major second. But if I go D to C, that's a ma minor seventh. So the inversion, and this is going to be true for all of them. The inversion of a major interval is a minor uh, interval, okay? So the inversion of a D, I mean, a, a, um, a major second is a minor seventh. Okay, one of the tricks you can use is it's always going to add up to nine. All right, so go C, E. C to E, all right, that's a major third, all right? E to C is a minor sixth. A major six would sound like this, but this is a minor six. Oh, what did I say? Did I say something, Bruce? Yeah, we're gonna talk. We're talking about intervals right now, Sam. Not yet. We're not talking about chords. We're talking about intervals, the distance. So if you go from C to E on that chart above, that d interval, that distance um, between those two notes is a major third. But if you go E up to C, that interval is a minor sixth. It's the inversion. We don't have minor ninths in this inversion. Okay, now, um, oh, are you still seeing bots, David? Now, nobody else, I mean, we got rid of that one. Okay, now if we go C to A, we have a major sixth. If you go A to C, that's a minor third. So the inversion of a major six is a minor third. Again, it's the opposite. One was major, now the other one's minor, and they both add up to, to nine. Okay, and the last one was C to B, and that was a major seventh. B to C is a minor, minor second. Love that interval. Always funny, major sevenths and minor seconds always sound very um, dissonant until you hear the rest of the chord. Like, it's like, whoa. And then, oh. <laughs> Same thing. It's like, whoa. And then you, you're like, oh, that's pretty. So, yeah, it's funny about minor, minor seconds and major sevenths. Okay. All right. So here's where we're going to get into the, you were asking me about, so would a, the, a, a, a diminished fifth also be called a, um, sharp four, and we're gonna call it augmented four. Okay, if you go C to F, that's not a major fourth. It's not called that. C to F is a perfect fourth, and C to G is a perfect fifth. And the reason is because C, um, C to F is a perfect fourth, 
F to C is a perfect fifth. So there's this weird relationship between these notes uh, that doesn't create a major or minor tonality. So C to F is a perfect fourth, um, C to G is a perfect fifth, F to C is a perfect fifth, and G to C is a perfect fourth. Okay, so the inversion of a perfect fourth is a perfect fifth, and the inversion of a perfect fifth is a perfect fourth. All right, music theory class is over. Now, we want to diminish that fifth, or we want to make that smaller. See, before, if we want to take, uh, take C to D and make it a minor second, we would flat the D. So C to D flat would be a minor second, whereas C to D would, would be a major second. Again, no quiz on this. This is not a need to know kind of thing. But it's a it's a it's a long way to answering the question. So when when you when you lower uh, when you lower the perfect fifth, you call it a diminished fifth, and when you raise the fourth, you call it an augmented fourth. You wouldn't say augmented fifth because you would just call that a minor sixth, and you wouldn't say diminished fourth because you would just call that a major third. All right? Because when we're talking about intervals, we're often talking about the sound. Okay, this is a little contradictory to what I said before when I said, well, we want to keep those every three letters going. So the DFA thing, remember, because D, D flat minor was D flat, F flat, A flat. And that's like, well, why not say D flat, E, A flat? And I said, well, because you really want to keep those every other letter thing going when you're talking about triads. Otherwise, it starts to get a little confusing. Um, and so... And in fact, if you had, if you were playing a D flat minor chord, you wouldn't have an E in it anyway. You'd probably have an E flat in that key. So, yeah, you don't want to confuse things by calling it an E when it should be called an F flat. Kind of an extreme case, so don't worry. Again, don't worry too much about that. But when you're talking about triad theory, we definitely do want to we we do want to um, uh, uh, try to keep the the names strict. But when we're talking about interval theory, we're really talking about what we're hearing more than what we're looking at. You can, you can talk about what you're looking at it too, uh, but that's kind of why it gets a little, um, it's, a, it's at some ways almost simpler. So a little about the implementation of seven chords with an accord progression cadence. Um, yeah, maybe, yeah, maybe I can hit on that a little bit here in a second. So now we've done, we did the major, right? We did C. Triad, we did C major 7, we did C major 9, we did C major 11, which doesn't really ever get asked for, but C major 9 with a sharp 11 does. And then we did C major 13, which actually is a, a you know, like we did the A major 13 sounds great. I mean, so, because you get that A in the bass. But if you just take that, that's basically a major 13, this is a major 13, this is a nice one. Um, so, you know, there's definitely some fun major 13s if you just kind of start hunting around for them. Um, but um, that's not as common as C13. Well, what's C13? Okay, well, we're going to get to that. So when we're, when we're talking about seventh chords, okay, we're gonna, now we're going to build um, the triads the same with this lower diagram. So the upper diagram is C major scale. The lower di diagram is a C mixolydian scale. So the only difference between major and uh, mixolydian is that the seventh is flatted. And of course, it's the 14th up there too. We're not even going to talk about the 14th or the 15th. Uh, those are notes that you've already discussed earlier. Um, and again, some people want to know why we go every other note. Oh, you know, let me backtrack. Let me backtrack, okay? Uh, because this is something Sam was, was talking about. Um, okay, so so C7. Well, let me let me go into C7 right here. We'll talk about this one first. C7 would be C E G B flat, right? Those are the notes. And so when we want C major seven, we have to put a major in front of it. And this is like I just talked about. Why did we? Why did C7 become or seventh become shorthand for a dominant chord instead of a major chord? And I, again, I think it goes back to just basic notation um, and, you know, people trying to use shorthand and um, people trying to play folk songs and, and write out chord charts and uh, lyric sheets with chords on them. It just became that shorthand. I have that, that brown book that I had back, it goes back to the 60s, 
that everybody, all the youth groups had, and they had Let It Be in it, it had Dylan songs in it, it had Christian Kumbaya and that kind of stuff in it. And that's kind of where that seventh chord would show up, and and um, and it was just called C7. All right, so um, now what I want to talk to you about are, well, let's look at C6. That was a very common chord. A six chord was very common. C6 would be C, E, G, and a six, which is A. You don't call it 13 because a 13 would have 1, 3, 5, 7, 9, 11, 13. It would have everything from the 1 to the 13, every other letter, or every other number. But if it's 6, it's just a triad plus the 6, all right? And this is my thinking for for several, for several a couple other chords, all right? And uh, and Sam and uh, John and, and I think uh, Peroni, and some of you were asking questions about this. So... So C6, oops, is C, E, G, A. Does that make sense to everybody, right? All right. Now, we don't really ever get asked to play C, C, uh, add six. That's not, you could call it technically, you could call it C, add six. But uh, you're you're writing out way more information than you need to. You could write it out add six or uh, C parentheses add six close parentheses. Oops, no, sorry. C major six is a different chord. Oh, thank you, David. God bless you. People are feeling generous today. Is it because the stock market's up five hundred? Um, yes. Yeah, there is a distinction between the 6th and the 13th, 100%. So a 6th would be a much simpler chord, which makes sense. A 13th sounds like a complex chord. A 6th is a very simple chord. I don't really remember ever seeing C add 6 or... Now, C sus 6, I've still also never seen. But if we think about... Like, let's, I always, D, D, D sus, right? D, D, we get rid of the third, and we add the four for a sus four chord. D sus four, okay? So, technically, if you were to do a sus six, right? You could call it that. I would just, I would just call that a D six, even though there's no fifth in it. Okay, we have, I have in this particular voicing, doesn't mean you can't have a fifth. Um, if I play D6 this way, I have a fifth in it. Um, but this way, there, I'm, I'm taking the fifth up to the six, five, six, it's a whole step. Five, six, in, in the key of C, it would be. I'm just playing top three strings. That's a very common rock and roll kind of thing. It reminds me a little bit. Uh, of Queen, fun little thing called Love or something like that, right? Um, a lot of times you would go up to that dominant seventh. That kind of thing you would, would be very common. But so I don't know that I would necessarily call that a sus six because here's what happens. Like if I go to D and I go up the, the, there and I go sus six, now I'm playing a, D, a B minor over D chord. So I'm almost going to think of that more as a B minor chord than a D sus six. A D six, it's just funny because I would, you know, like, there's a D six, uh, here's a D six, here's a D six. None of these have the five in them um, because it's a little difficult to get that five in there. See, I got the five now, but I got rid of the third. So where did I get the third? Oh, there's the third. Okay, well, now I got rid of the fourth. Well, how do I get the fourth? <laughs> you know, so it's oftentimes the sixth does not contain the fifth, but it, it can. Okay, let's put it that way. All right, so, so and, uh, the only reason I'm telling you this is because this is how I came to the conclusion that some shorthand, what was, what was very common was the notation C, um, sus two or C add two. All right. So 
C sus 2 would be C E G, a triad, plus the 2. All right. Well, that makes sense. We do that all that chord all the time. Right? Like dust in the wind. Right there. So that's a pretty common um, chord. Um, and C add two was the way what we called it. And I remember writing out C add two forever and ever and ever. All right. But then I went, oh, wait a minute. If we call C six C six and not C add six, why don't we just call C two or I mean C add two C two? Right? It's like, and and C sus two. I don't really know if that could be a chord. I mean, it could be. So if I take a C triad, like this C triad, and go up and the the sus the two, and get rid of the See, because when when we do D sus, we're getting rid of the third. D sus four and it has no third in it. But a D sus two still has a D in it usually. We don't play D sus two without a D in it. So I'm like, that doesn't make any sense. Let's not call it a sus, because we're not taking all the D's up to E's. You know, you could. Not like you do a D sus four. So I'm like, let's just call it a C two or a D two. Simplify it. So, so C C and then C two is just adding a D note. So, so I took I took the the common notation of C six. And I started writing C2 instead of C add nine or C add two. C add nine was another one that was that was the actually more common than C add two. Now that I think about it, C add nine was C E G and then the ninth, which would be the D, and that was a, a way of justifying it. And so I wrote C add nine a lot. That was really common, but I realized I don't need to do that. I could go C two, boom, done, boom. Shorter, faster, quicker, doom. Okay, so because we have C6, why not C2? Uh, that makes complete sense. All right, so now we've, Sam, we've got accommodated, the, we've taken, we've got a triad, right? We have C, E, G. You can see it up right here, right there, C, E, G. On either one of these, this works, C, E, G. Uh, the C with a sus2 would be add a D. The C with a sus4 would be go to D, F. And the C with a sus6 would be uh, go to A. All right. So we can see that we have C, the C triads and we have the susses right there. Um, but you know what? C2 makes sense and C6, we got them all accounted for. So we don't need to say C sus4 anymore. We don't need to C, say C sus4. Why? That's... Almost redundant. So I just say C sus, that equals C sus four. All right. However, so with the C two chord, right? C two is a C triad with a two added. C six is a C triad with a sixth added. All right, what about a C four? We're not talking about explosives here. C4 would be the C triad with the fourth added. Normally, you would say C add four, but why? So I use the norm C4, and what that means, sorry, C4, that is C, E, F, G. It's a great chord, and it, I, I'm gonna show you a couple chords. I'm gonna show you, so C, this is not C sus because we have an E in it. C sus implies, or C sus four implies that there's the four is taking over the third. You got rid of the third, you put fourth in. It is not arbitrary. C sus is generally when you see sus, it's now used just to refer to the four. Okay, 
Yes, it's not arbitrary. Um, and because there's a big difference between and you know D sus, D sus four and D sus two, but D four D sus is that and D two is that. So you don't need with with um, if you're going to call something D two, you don't need to use the word. You don't need to say sus four for four. Okay, I'm probably confusing you, but yes, the, like I said, the suspended tones though, like like when we we tune our guitar like an open G and we want to add all those. We talked. Remember we did. Um, talked about all those suspensions and that's I'm talking about suspensions in a theoretical sense but I'm not talking about suspensions in a chord notation sense okay if I talk about a four a, a, a four three suspension or a two one suspension or a six five suspension I'm talking more in a musical sense in the context of the of, of describing something theoretically but if I if I want to use notation to describe a chord totally different thing okay yeah C4 is explosive, but so C sus is this, but C4 could be this. I love that chord. So we have C, F, G, C, and E. We got that major seventh again, which is like, oh, rub, bad, rub. Oh, beautiful. I could also put the sus4 on top. See what I did there? I put the F on top, but I kept the E right here. That's less common. Okay, I'm going to show you a really cool D4, all right? We've done this one before, but I'm going to show it to you anyway. Play a C chord, add your pinky on the top, all right? You got it? All right, now slide the whole thing up two frets, and that's a D4 chord. I have a D triad, I have a D F sharp A, and then I've got a G in the middle of it all. Yeah, Peroni, it, it, it definitely, I'm, I'm not probably helping at all. <laughs> I'm really not. But I'm going to, I'll do a recap here in a second with the major stuff. Okay. So, all right. So here's my recap. <clears throat> the major extensions off of the triad, the C triad, C, E, G is C. C, E, G, B is C major 7. C, E, G, B, D is C major 9. C, E, G, B, D, F is a theoretical major 11. C, E, G, B, D, F, A is, is major 13th. But again, when we get up to, those are seven notes. We get up to there, we're going to start eliminating, eliminating ones. You can, you can eliminate the fifth. You definitely can eliminate that 11th. We don't want to hear that. And um, you could probably eliminate the root if you have a bass player. So now you're down to a, on a, the C 13th now becomes a four note chord, which is actually easy. Now, a, a C six chord would be a C triad with the six added. A C four chord would be a C triad with the four added. A C two chord would be a C triad with the two added. A C sus chord would be a C F G. In other words, the, you're suspending the, the four, which means you're going three to four, you're getting rid of the three. Okay. Oh, that, oh, cool. Yeah, that uncommon C4. Yeah. And, and um, C4, it just, it just has a certain, it, it's very kind of major seven sounding, right? It's a very pretty chord. I, you know, I will often use this C4 as a substitute for an F chord. Somebody said, you know, playing F, I'll be like, so like the song say is C to F. It's like, heavy-handed so certain going C to major to F major it's like one to the four chord but if you just do if you just add your pinky to that C chord you get this much more subtle change because again you got a bass player you're fine so I might hammer on that or add that to the full F major 7 there over C again I'm trying to show you practical examples. Okay, Vito said, I'm sorry, thanks Bruce. Uh, how can I add a hammer on and pull off with suspensions while accompanying the singer? Um, well, I mean, you can do... Oh, 
Oh yeah, you could do anything you want. I mean, like, yeah, I mean, if you're the accompanist, um, if I wanted to, going C to F, like. You could do a walk up, you could see. I mean, that's just all embellishment kind of stuff. Um, and we could talk about, we talked about, we kind of talked about embellishments in the context of, of, of um, soloing. I do get that asked that a lot, Peroni, on how do you kind of make songs more interesting and things. There's so many, many tricks. Uh, but a lot of it depends on the chord. You know, there are certain things that I would do over a C chord that I, would, I wouldn't do over an F chord. And there's definitely things I would do over the F chord that I wouldn't necessarily do in a C chord. Uh, like this, like that kind of thing, like um, uh, the, the the Carly Simon song, right? Wasn't it in that song that she did that? Um, anticipation. That's super easy on F, uh, D chord, but on, that's, you're going to break a finger off trying to do that on a C chord. So it's a, it, a lot of it depends on what chord progression you're playing. Um, that's kind of why people capo. So like if they're really like the uh, the way that D sus thing and they want to do it in F. You know, like the, you know, G. He's, you know, he's definitely the king of embellishing a chord progression and making it less boring but he's that's technically you know he's kind of it's like that's like an intro almost that's you know very much like right it's like an intro to the song so he's actually writing almost like a classical guitar piece um, and what came first you know did he did he write the song and then he came up with the intro or did he start with the intro I'd be a good question for James if I ever met him um, uh, he may not even remember, um, but he's basically playing off of the chords. That's an A chord to an E minor seven, the D chord, and back to A. That's all that is. So he just realized that this is an A chord, and that's an E minor seven chord. Um, so that's that's kind of what um, uh, those kind of sus and things like that that that. I, I was talking about those definitely come into play when you're trying to embellish something. Okay, now but let's get back. Now we're gonna go to um, we're gonna go to dominant chords, dominant uh, chords. And so C7, C9, C11, and C13 are all dominant chords. They're all gonna have a B flat in them. They're all gonna be dominant seventh chords. Now, um, and we're gonna notice something with uh, one of them in particular. But um, so. If we look at C, we did this already. We have C triad, C, E, G. Then we have C7. We were just going to call it C7. Shorthand, C, E, G. Oops, sorry. C, E, G, B flat. All right. C9 or C9 would be C, E, G, B flat, and D. I got it right. C, oops. Nine. Okay, um, a great way, so let's look at these chords real quick. Um, C, okay, C7, right? C7 could be played like this. Um, one way to play it, X, and then we have, what am I doing? Three, two, three, one, three. Okay, that's a very common C7 chord. If I play in the key of C, do I play G mixolydian, in the fifth of C? You could do either. Uh, hey, Jim. 
He does go to C7 in, in G8. No, it's... Yeah, I think that's right. If it's in the key of F, it goes... So C7 occurs naturally in the key of F because it's the 5 in the key of F. So if we're in the key of C mixolydian like we are on that bottom chart, then the relative major key is the key of F. Um, and and the C7, the, the 7th chords, again, this trans goes for every key. So um, it definitely is a, is these set, these dominant C chords are going to definitely want to go to some kind of F chord. Sometimes you can go to you can go to F minor or F major, it doesn't necessarily matter, but exactly. Um, so, uh, all right. So, yeah, so the C9 I want to show you is this one. Okay. Hey, Benwell, good to see you. W welcome. Welcome, Kenya. Anyone from Kenya is always welcome. C9, um, I'm playing it two, three, three, the, 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 the three, two, sorry, like that. And I'm laying down my third finger. It's a great chord. In fact, in that, in that C9, the C, E, G, B flat, and D, it has every one of those notes. All right. So can you see how I'm playing this here? So sec second finger on the third fret of the fifth string. First finger on the second fret of the third string, uh, fourth string. And then I'm laying the uh, top three, uh, on the top three strings, I'm laying my third finger down on the third fret. And that gets me my B flat, my D, and my G. There's the fifth on top. You could play it also like this with these three fingers. Good exercise might be going between C9 and C major 9. Difficult for even me, especially looking in the, not looking at my hands. There's, there's our C major 9 that we learned a second ago. Here's the C9. But you, a lot of times you lay it down. Now, I think of this as the James Brown chord. That's kind of what the horn sections are doing, but it's also the guitar player. But again, this is this is a very this is a completely movable chord. There's no open strings in it, and whatever the, this is, that's what kind of ninth chord it is. So this is C9, C sharp nine, or D flat nine, D nine, E flat nine, E nine, F, G nine, D flat nine, E flat nine, B nine, A nine, A flat nine, F nine. It's kind of like just throw your hand on the guitar, grab the guitar. A lot of people play minor sevens like this, so it makes it very natural. Um, so yeah, so that's the ninth. Now the eleventh. Okay, well let's look at the eleventh. Okay, we have um, we have so C eleven. And before, when C major 11, we went, yeah, I'm not going to use that. C, E, G, B flat, D, and F. Okay. If we analyze this, basically what we have with C, with, um, C 11, okay, so another name I could say C dominant 11, but again, I'm using shorthand here. I, I don't remember ever seeing C D O M eleven written out. I've seen C D O M seven, um, C dominant seven written out, but not eleven or nine or thirteen. Man, I've never seen it. So uh, take care, Catherine. Um, so uh, if you look at it though, it's a C triad with a B flat triad on top. Or it's just those two. You have two major triads, B flat major. And so um, generally when they say C11, I I don't know that they want the E and G in there. So really, 
C11 or an 11th chord. Uh, I think another name for C11 is often called B flat over C. Okay? I think that that's pretty common. Um, and one way to play B flat over C is just to lay your finger across here and go. In fact, you can add that F. C11 could be that. There's just no E in there. But I don't know that you would want that E. You could, you know. But then I don't have a F in. Oh no, I have an F. I don't have a D in here. So if I went like this, yeah, it's just not, it's just not very conducive to being played. Um, so a lot of times it's a B flat. There's a B flat chord with a C in the bass. Okay. So instead, so instead of writing A11, you could write G over A. Okay. You got to think the dominant seventh. Make a triad on the dominant seventh. Put the 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 root in the bass, and that's your eleventh chord if you want it. So. Um, C9 at 11 would be unnecessary. You could, if you wanted, um, uh, if you wanted, a, that would be the same as C11. No, we, Sam, we already talked about that. that was the C major 11. That's the one we, I said that nobody really ever plays. I've never really heard that one or been asked that one. So C major 11 is not very common. C 11 really probably is more normally played as a B flat, even by piano players who can play all six notes. They generally would play kind of a B flat over C. Okay, it's that earth, wind and fire. It's just a lot easier to call this a G 11 than to say F over G, G over A, A flat over B flat, B flat over C, uh, C flat over D flat, <laughs> D flat over E flat. Yeah, I could just say G11, A11, B flat 11, C11, blah, blah, blah. You know, I don't have to think so much. I'm just going, this is the 11th, you know, it's the 11th chord. Okay, so let me show you this one. So you can do your earth, wind, and fire thing. Put your first finger on C, first fret of the second string. Put your second finger on A, the second fret of the G string. Put your third finger on the third fret of the low E string. And put your pinky on the third fret of the fourth string. Okay, and everything else is dead. So dead in the A string and dead in the E string. So if you think about it, it's a little triad, but with this note on the bottom, okay? C over E is just C with an E in the bass. Uh, C, um, but, but like C11 would be B flat with C in the bass. But it don't get too big. But anyway, so these are all 11th chords. They're very, very, I mean, a lot of suspensions in there. You got, you know, you've got that F and you got the 6 in there. Uh, so. You got that sus four, you got the six. So yeah, sometimes that, a lot of times that C11 would go to C. But I don't know that I would call it, like, again, yeah, I, I would call it B flat over C. I'm not in love, I think, by 10 CC. But that, that 11th chord, or the, like in this case, B flat over C or whatever, C11, is oftentimes um, used as a really strong chord um, uh, cadence to the one chord in the key of C mixolydian, which would be, well, the, the relative major, which would be F major. And the re what's interesting is remember we in the key of in any major key we have a the one chord is major the four chord is major and the five chord is major so what we have in this 
um, C11, we have a C triad and we have a B flat triad, right? When we, when we look at it pure, if we go through this chart down here at the bottom here, we go C, E, G, there's our C triad. Then we go to B flat, D, F. Look, there's an F triad, I mean a B flat triad. Guess what? This is the, this is the five chord in the key of F and this is the four chord in the key of F. So you're combining the five chord and the four chord in the key of F. So that means both of those chords have really strong resolutions to the F. Amen. Right? So, but you're combining them so it's even it's even stronger because you're combining two chords that want to resolve to that F. Okay, so it's kind of cool here today. Love it. Um, all right. So All right, so we, we've gotten to 11, C13. And C13 is going to be another one of those ones where we can't possibly play it on guitar because technical C13. And again, it's C13 is shorthand for C dominant 13. You don't need to say it. It's not C major 13, it's just C13. So that would be C, E, G, B flat, D, F, and A. There's our 13. Um, and generally in a 13th chord, we don't need the 11. Really what they want to hear on a 13th chord, the four main notes are the guide tones, which are the third and seventh. Okay. So E and B flat. And then you want to hear that ninth D and, but we definitely have to have the A because that is the 11th, 13th. Why would you call a 13th chord if you didn't have a 13 in it? All right. So. So, um, so those three tones you can play them a couple different ways, or those four tones, sorry. Here's E. So if we play this C9, we can get that pinky out there. Um, I would do that a lot, maybe not down in here, but if I was up in here. So that's a ninth chord. We talked about that just a minute ago, this ninth chord. So um, C9, E9. If you add, add your pinky out two frets past the uh, the top note on the first string, you get a that's the thirteenth right there. Okay, but you don't need to get the bass in there if you got a bass player. So you can just play this. That's one voice. So let's go back to C though. Okay, so I have the E. So four. I'm sorry. Fourth fret, a fourth string, second fret, and then three, three, and five. That's pretty difficult. That's pretty hard. Um, again, there's no there's no root in this but if you're playing if you're playing a 13th chord you're probably in a band <laughs> so if you're in a band you got a bass player so you generally don't have to worry about getting all the notes in there you don't need to necessarily have to hit, hit that bass note okay now a much better a much better one sadly i'm going to have a couple tens in here so it's going to look weird on this uh, uh, typewriter um, tablature, but no, wait, eight, nine, ten, ten. Okay. But basically, and if you want, you can get your thumb, you can bring your thumb around and grab that C note, the bass, but this one actually feels really good in the hands. There's our, there's our B flat. So I'm at the eighth fret on the fourth string, then the ninth fret. So that feels good. There's our tritone. And there's our sixth, and there's our, um, yeah, there's our, and I'm sorry, sixth, also, the, uh, th there's the 13th, same thing. And then, um, yeah, tens are ten, yeah, those are tens, not ones and zeros. <laughs> Can you imagine? I want to play that. I can't even, 
strum it. <laughs> so yeah, not what I meant. Um, so we're doing this here. And that actually feels pretty good. Now, this is, the, this is the ninth on top, whereas down here we had the 13th on top. So I have ninth on top, that means if I want to go, if I want to go C13 sharp nine, boom, slide the pinky up and look at that, all diagonal in a row. It's kind of a, an interesting chord, create some tension. get wacky we're not really talking about this yet but not today anyway but there's the ninth right if I want to go with that flat ninth so the the the, the alter tones is what we call that the 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 fifth and the ninth are the tones you can alter you wouldn't do flat 13 you know you wouldn't say C 13 flat 13 you wouldn't say that that's a that would be an augmented chord okay I'm going to talk about that, but but the ninth and the thirteenth, and that's the beauty of like uh, I'm sorry, the ninth and the um, uh, the fifth, the fifth, and, ninth. and that's the beauty of this this ninth chord. We, we may talk about that. Maybe I'll show you that. We did talk about that. Remember when we played? We knew that this was the ninth, this is the fifth, and we went C seven flat or C nine flat five, uh, C nine sharp five. C7 flat nine, C7 sharp five, nine, you know, all those variations because you just, if you know which notes of the fifth and the ninth, you can make these. You can make all those alterations. They're, you know, it's funny because sometimes you'll see C7 alt. And so basically what that is, is kind of like dealer's choice. If it says C7 alt, then they want you to alt like, alter the ninth and the fifth any way you see fit so like here i'm flatting the ninth and sharpening the fifth here i'm sharpening the ninth and flatting the fifth here i'm flatting the ninth and flatting the fifth here i'm sharpening the fifth and sharpening the ninth so you know that would be i've seen that and when i see it it's one of those things where it's not uncommon but it's one of those things that you, it's almost like you're, you you got to go from one brain side of the brain to the other brain real quick. You're like, oh, shoot, you, you know, because you're you're taking orders. You're taking orders. Oh, C9, you know, and it goes F major seven and a D minor seven flat five. And you, all these orders. And all of a sudden they throw C alt, C7 alt at you. And it's like, oh, that's not an order. That's an option. That gives me too many options. I have to, you know, I have to use this part of my brain now. Um, and so. Um, so that can be a little bit, that could be a little bit weird, but that is a real thing. Um, it'll, it'll basically say C7 alt. It's kind of a jazz thing. I, I, th I bet I could find it if I looked in the real book. Um, uh, anyway, I'll, I don't need to look at the real book right now, but yeah. So, um, I'm getting tired though. I'm, uh, I'm, I'm, uh, <laughs> I don't know. I'm gonna I, I'm gonna confess to you now um, not confess but uh, I run the risk of of not living up to it but I'm, I'm intermittent fasting right now um, which feels great I don't have any problem with it um, but it's like ooh wow I'm and I'm not hungry yet but yesterday I got hungry I was like ooh it took took forever for me to get the, and I'm doing 18 six right now. Um, and I might change that if I lose the weight that I want to lose and for maintenance, but I, it may be something I think I could kind of stick with. Oh, thanks club. Oh, <laughs> yeah. Thanks, Brad. Um, but yeah, we didn't talk about minor, uh, the minor chords yet, but we, we'll, we may pick up on that. Uh, no, I'm doing 18 and 16. So I'm doing 18 hours, no eating, and six. I'm 18, six. So 18 hours, no eating, and six hours of eating. Um, and the way I, last Monday when I was with you guys, I decided to start doing it last Monday. Um, and what I did was I go, okay, I, like, Sunday night, you know, because I tend to stay up a little late working, 
um, or goofing off or whatever, but I'm, I get, you know, it's like I'm a hobbit and I, I get hungry for second dinners. <laughs> you know, if you eat dinner at 6 or 6.30 or 7, 11 o'clock rolls around. If you're still up, you're going to get hungry again. So that's, that's the danger of staying up late is you, you tend to snack and that's the worst time to eat is right before. Um, and um, so what I did was I, I think I the last time I ate was like, 10 35 or something on Sunday night so I rounded up to 11 I said okay I can uh, let's see how far I can go Monday well last Monday I got all the way to five o'clock and I was like I'm fine so I started eating at five I you know I got got some I don't remember what I, I had cheese steak and apple and then Beth got home and we had dinner and I was fine and I ate you know till like 10 o'clock and so then the next day I could eat as early as four if I wanted to so last night, but th this week we're doing something at church every night this week, so I have to eat early. So last night, the last time I ate was at 9.30, so I can eat as early as 3.30 today. Uh, but I lost four pounds the first week, um, and I can feel it. I can, f I, you know, like, I, there have been three or four of those days I was kind of like, of the seven days, the first seven days, I was like, Whew, I could use some food right now. You know, I got in and I'm cheating a little bit. I got cream in my coffee, but a little bit of cream and that's it. Um, and if I hadn't lost any weight the first week, then I'd go, okay, maybe I need to go to black coffee, but I don't know if I can do that. Coffee doesn't taste like coffee if it's black to me, but, but Holly's doing the same thing. You're doing 18.6 as well. Yeah. I, you know, the thing is 12, 12 is a piece of cake. I, I go 12 hours without eating. No problem. I could go, I can go 15 hours without eating I because if I go to bed at midnight well that would take you to if I if I ate my last meal at say 10 o'clock at night then that would put it 15 would put it at one o'clock yeah there are a lot of times where I didn't eat lunch until like one or two and I never had breakfast um and so I rarely have breakfast so I'm I'm doing the eating at night um I I don't overcompensate with water because I don't like drinking water especially on an empty stomach it almost highlights the fact that I've got an empty stomach. Uh, Diet Coke is okay. Um, lemonade, you know, uh, uh, calorie, low, no calorie lemonade. Um, and then water. I'll drink water, but that's it, you know. Um, uh, and I'll usually I'll have like, I'll, I'll just chug a big glass of water right before I work out because I've been working out too. Um, and not having a problem doing that. I thought, oh, maybe I won't have the energy to work out, but it's been going well. Like I said, I've lost four pounds. You can't really tell yet, but um, I do have an I do have a six pack. I don't know if we can get past the the keg to see it, but it's there because <laughs> I work that. I work the abs hard, so I know that if I ever get if I ever lose the keg, you can see the six pack. Not that I'm going to show it to you. <laughs> it's more. It's funny. I, I do it more for my wife than for me. Not that she cares. She would love me unconditionally, but I don't want her to have to. <laughs> So, uh, cold shower, fasting combo. Oh yeah. Um, cold shower. Yeah. You know, what we're, we're, we're going to start doing is actually getting in the pool once it gets cold or the jacuzzi. I have a friend, she has a, one of those 39 degree tubs outside of her house, you know, in her back patio and they get into that. She can do two minutes a day. He can do eight minutes a day at 39 degrees. I'm like, wow, that's. That's, you're talking some serious, like, holy cow. Um, yeah, so you drink your coffee black. I, I, I wish I could get used to that. I think if I started drinking my coffee black, I probably wouldn't drink co Starbucks. I, I'd probably get better coffee. But I don't, when, once you put the cream in there. And again, if I, I lost four pounds. So I'm right at this point, I'm good with the cream. So. Yeah, working out and get well. I'm not, I'm not getting a, uh, for those six hours. I can eat whatever I want. I I I eat a lot in those six hours. You can eat as much as you want and whatever you want. And I try to make sure it's very balanced. Um, I'm trying to make sure I get lots of vitamin C um, and roughage, but um, I'm still I'm eating you know beef and chicken and whatever you know lots of bread if I want. It doesn't matter. So yeah, I'm getting plenty of calories. Um, it's just they're in, they're compressed into a smaller part of the day. So we'll see what happens. But yeah, the 39 degrees is crazy. 
Oh, do I love or oh Charlie? Oh Padres, yeah, the, I, that was unbelievable. I, I'm not really a Dodger fan. I live in LA. I've been to Dodger games. I've never been to a Padres fan. I the the thing was, it was fun to see the Dodgers win all those games. And they're like, oh wow, they're they're doing great. But they are awful in the postseason. Uh, this is not the first time they had the best record in the major leagues and didn't get past the first round. Uh, well, they, no, yeah, they didn't have to play in the first round. They didn't have to play. They played in this this was technically the second round, I guess, of the playoffs. Um, but you got to at this point now, I have to root for the Padres because uh, that would be awesome for them to win the World Series. Holy cow! I don't think they've even been to the World Series. Have they been to the World Series? I don't know what's wrong. The Dodgers were just leaving everybody on base, so it's just awful. So. Yeah, Holly, and that's probably true. I could probably move if, again, I can naturally move it up if I, and I may stick with this uh, if I stop eating at 9.30, um, but that was last night. I I did eat right up to 9.30, and I was in bed by 10. So it's not good to go to bed on a full stomach. It doesn't bother me. I, I'm so tired, I go right out. But, um, but yeah, I, I have a hard time going to sleep on an empty stomach. If I'm hungry, that's hard to go to sleep. And that's when I'm most likely to be tempted to cheat. So if I'm losing weight, then great. If I, if I, and you know, our bodies, Beth's body is amazing at like learning <laughs> what she's doing to lose weight and then counteracts it. <laughs> so she would, she'd just be like, she, she like, she, she'll lose, like she'll start a new diet, you know, like Atkins or something and she'll lose 12, 15 pounds, and then it'll just stop. Just stop. And then she, and her body goes, oh, so that's what we're doing. And so if my body does that too, I can see doing the intermittent thing permanently. I mean, I may not do 18-6. I, I could go to 16-8. Um, but, you know, it almost makes sense if you think about historically how man survived. You really, you wouldn't, you would be eating like seven meals a day. You probably have one big meal every day. So, boy, so you don't eat anything after 3 p.m. See, that would be really hard for me. But a lot of people have a hard time, like, not eating when they first get up in the morning. For me, that's a natural thing. So I'm kind of going with my natural body clock on this. Um, and and so far, so so far, so good. We'll see. And I'm able to work out too. That's the nice thing. And I like working out on an empty stomach. I hate it when I like have a have lunch or something, and then I go, "Oh shoot, I forgot to work out today." And then I go work out, and it's like, oh, brutal. So I'm probably gonna work out right now. Oh, they've won two NL pins. Oh, that's right. Yeah, they have no. Thank you. Thank you, Sam. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you can't root for the Yankees <laughs> or the the Braves. You know, you got to root for the Padres. Kind of a funny name for a baseball team, too, in my opinion. I'm sure it had something to do with all the missions in California. Yeah, there is no one answer. Exactly right, Holly. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and and we had a party for Beth on Friday because last week was her birthday, and I had I had catered by this really really good really good um, uh, like kebab place called the Kebab Brothers, man. And I got way too much food. But the great thing about all that beef and the, you know the chicken. Is that we still have it and it's it's perfect for uh, for like eating this week. So it's it's been it's solid protein. Uh, John White, wonder the difference between an ad nine and an ad second. There's um, nothing. Generally, when they say ad nine, because you it, it, if it, both of them are a triad in the case of the upper C E G with the ninth added, which is D. 
or the second, which is D, the same note. Um, and so uh, the, the notation was kind of a dealer's choice. Some arrangers preferred C add two and some preferred C add nine. Um, both can be gotten rid of by just saying C2. C2 will tell everybody that you, you want a C add nine chord. So, and it's, it's kind of like a sus two chord, the same thing. The only thing is the term sus implies that you're getting, in my head, because a sus four, you're getting rid of the third and you're adding the four. So if you're doing a sus two chord, then you have to get rid of the root to go to the two, right? So instead of C, E, G, so instead of um, C, E, G, now you have this. And that may be, you may want that sus two. In fact, um, I might call that, you know, uh, that's not his theme. I might call that a C sus two, C sus two, because you're there is no C in there. Right? It's maybe easier to see in A. Now, if I had an A in the bass, I would call that A two to A. Okay, if there's an A in there, but um, if if there's a if there's a root in there, but yeah. So I don't use the term sus two. So, but you. I think generally sus2, add2, add9 were all used to do the exact same thing. It's at least how I interpret it if I saw it on a chart. And um, so it's all can be gotten rid of by just saying C2, boom, done. Yeah, add9, sus2, same thing. Oh, you went to the game on Saturday, that's awesome. You can also substitute the third, yeah. And that's the other thing about the sus too, because suspended means like to lift. And so when you're going three down to two, no, you're not, you're, you're, you're falling down to it. Um, and that is a very common, um, like if I were to go A2 like this, right? I do that all the time. I really like, uh, one, of my, one of my tricks I like to do is uh, take a triad. Like here's an A triad, and then here's the third, and I go down to the second. A hard on acoustic. See that? And then if I go up to this triad, okay, there's the there's the five, I go down to the four. five from the four so yeah you can definitely go down to the two you can go from the three and you can go up to the two from the um, from the root but if you have the the one three five and the two in there then you just call it a two chord so yeah yeah if I if I want the only sus chord that really requires the term sus is the four uh, because in that in that context we're getting rid of that third and going to the fourth because um, again d4 and d sus are different chords d4 has that rub of the i wish i had my piano but d4 has that rub of that f sharp and that g against each other but d sus just has a g no f sharp so yeah and i apologize for using the letter names to describe a lot of stuff but it it, it does Yeah, and yeah, the, the the three, the triad plus the the three, or the having the three. Yes, there is a little bit of a rub there too. Uh, it's not as it's not as radical as the four and the three. Like for example, here's a D, D nice D two chord. I'm playing a D triad with another D on top and an E on top. Yesterday, for some reason, I hear. I 
I got, we got to talk about doing chord melodies. Um, but I think, is it Peroni we, you were asking me, and uh, Peroni and Vito maybe, but um, about um, embellishing chords, uh, you know, playing embellishments or moving between chords. And we can, we can definitely talk about that, you know. Um, uh, what, what would I call that? Embellishing your plane? No, not embellishing your um, Playing through chord progressions. I, mean, I would need a chord progression, maybe just, you know, like even one, six, four, five kind of thing, like, like G. And I don't even know where that stuff comes from. I think what it can't, comes from is from writing music. I think you're more likely to, to create that kind of stuff when you're writing songs. Because when you're writing songs, you're, you're trying to create, you know, you go, okay, I got a song, but it doesn't sound like a song, right? Like, like, um, But it doesn't really sound like a song. It just sounds like I'm strumming out some chords, but. That sounds like a song, right? So it's kind of the same thing. I could have a, I go. How is it? If I'm playing in a band and there's other stuff going on, and I'm just holding down. See, if I'm playing in a band, then I might. This is. You might, you'd be actually disserving the song if you did any more than that, because you really are. You're. You know, I always feel like a har acoustic guitar in a band is a harmonic shaker. Uh, when you hear, when it starts, the song starts with acoustic guitar, then you, everybody hears it. Once the band's in, you don't really hear it, you sense it. It's like a shaker with pitch. And that's kind of what acoustic guitar becomes in a band context. Oh, do I need to bring acoustic? No, it's tomorrow night. I'm trying to remember what night I'm supposed to play acoustic. Um, and then... Um, but if it's just a guitar and a voice, or maybe guitar, bass, and drums and a voice, then you're gonna, you know, I'm at. You know, then you're gonna wanna, you're gonna fill it out, make it more. Have a, have a fingerprint and a personality, that kind of thing. So, creative harmony, you know, maybe. Um, and reharmonizing, you know, like like, you know, we've did this before. We talked about this before. Like, you know, that's the progression. And you've established that this is the progression of one six four five. Then you can make it interesting by maybe subbing. I'm subbing in the three for the four chord. That's kind of cool. Or maybe you sub in the, the two chord for the. That kind of stuff, you know, you can you can start reharmonize. That's reharmonizing a song, um, and and uh, you can go insane on that stuff. <laughs> oh, LJ has been lurking. Uh, Capo 3, something in the way she moves. Yep. A dentist awaits. Oh, no. Well, Jack, I hope it was interesting. Oh, you're diving into Ableton. Yeah, we're working with Ableton all week at Shepherd. At the church, we work with Ableton. Um... 
Yeah, the yeah, you know, electric guy can electric players, well, I'm guilty sometimes of that too, but root to the flat four. Flat uh right, right. Um flat six. Yeah, that that yeah, there's a lot of I, it's funny because we can talk about endings, you know, like if we're endings um, so like you got all these you know songs like, every false ending in the book and never get to the one chord so um, let's see was it what were you figuring out there Sam oh that that intro oh yeah 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 and and I don't, I mean, he doesn't even play it that way every time. He plays it different. You know, live, it's kind of funny to watch him. I I, I found, a, there's a, if you actually, if you if you Google it, if you go to YouTube and enter Fire and Rain by James Taylor, I guess live or something, there's a, there's a video of him performing it before the song was released. And he's just on a TV show or something. And the audience doesn't know the song at all. Like it wasn't, it was, you know, he'd just written it, which is amazing. You know, he probably recorded it. It's probably not even released yet. And they had, because they weren't singing along with, they didn't really clap like, oh, Fire and Rain. You know, now it's like his biggest song. And uh, it's really fascinating to kind of see him do the song. Um, he's such a great guitar player. He's got such a great feel. I stood next to him at a deli once in Pitts Pittsburgh. I was teaching a clinic in Pittsburgh, and we went to the same deli, and we were in line together. I just kind of said, hey, I didn't really talk to him. He didn't seem like he wanted to talk, so I didn't want to bug him. But I wish I had now. I have a friend that plays percussion with him, a good friend that plays percussion with him. But I keep trying to get tickets. He's, I forget. Where is James right now? Uh, let's see. He's, um, he's got to be touring. He's always touring, which is amazing, because he's not a kid. Oh, yeah, he's in, that's right. He's in England. I was thinking about getting her tickets, um, you know, for a birthday or something like that, but he's not got, he doesn't have, I don't think, any, here he is, uh, concert schedule. Schedule, here we go in the US, Florence, Italy, on Halloween. Yeah, he's in Italy, it's fun. I mean, and he, yeah, well, let's see, what's he doing? Oh man, he works his butt off. Is it with his band or is he by himself? What tour is this? Free guitar lessons, check that out. I did check these out. Actually, he talks about his getting his fingernails um, Think where's the one on the fingernails? All I want by Joni Mitchell. Oh, that's cool, man. Take those. Check out those lessons there. Tuning. Anyway. Huh. I, I have to check those out. Um, yeah. So like he's in England right now. Then oh nice. Okay. So he's got. Like 11 days off before he's in Milan. So I'm just assuming he's going to stay in Italy, which is great. I don't need sibling. I can make these smaller. Oops. There we go. Um, and then it looks like he's the 28th, the 30th, the 31st, the 2nd, the 3rd, the 5th, 7th. And he's going pretty solid 8th, 10th, 11th, 13th. Like a day on, a day you know, two days in a row on, a day off, two days, two, uh, so then finishes up in Germany. So then probably heading home. 
but yeah, and it, it's, yeah, because it'll be it'll be cold. But at the end of November, it'll be pretty darn cold in Germany, so he's probably going to want to head home. Although he lives on the East Coast. Uh, but he's not in the state. He doesn't have any dates booked for the states, so he must have done that tour earlier. So, anyway. Yes. You know, he he does have that, that lesson. I'm going to have to... And I've talked about how I, I often will tune, um, but... No, no, you can you can do a false ending to, to go two semitones higher. That's what everybody. That's oftentimes what Kate. You know, I, it, it's a little cheesy to me to like if I'm in the key of C. Basically, the the rule of thumb is like the gospel rule, not the like the you think gospel according to music, but like in gospel music, what they do is they'll go to the five chord of the next key. So if I'm in C and I want to go up two semitones, like you said, up a whole step to the key of D, and C. you would just go to the five chord, you know, um, in that um, in that key of C. Now the other thing you could do. You can, you can either make that five chord an addendum to the chord progression or an alteration to the chord progression. Okay, did you see the difference? So when I went F, G, A, that was an addendum. The chord progression was going to go to F, G anyway. So C, A minor, F, G. But but you can do it as an, an addendum, an addition to the progression like that. And add, just go to A then and sit on A for a bar and then go to your new key. But if you don't want to add a bar of music, then what you do is you just go... C, A minor, F, and then go to the five, that five of the new key, A, and now you're in D without ever adding a bar, which is, which is sometimes the way you want to go because you don't, you don't want, A, you don't want it to be too dramatic or too obvious, um, uh, but you still want that key change in there. So you don't really do a lot of key changes, but you, you know, in music, that's not a very common thing. Yeah. That you could totally make it an A7 chord. That would give it a little, even a little bit more attention to uh, to the tension to, that wants to be resolved to the D. Yeah, but A major or A7 would both want to go to D. Um, oh, wow. Yeah, you saw him and Carly. That probably, were they dating or something? Did they date? <gasps> Carly and, and, and James? Oh, nice. Yeah, do it. Do it, Sam. All right. <clears throat> oh, Paul Martin Six, did you really learn a lot, or are you just lie? You just telling me that to make me feel better? I hope so. I, I hope I wasn't too like all over the map. Uh, I hope I didn't make it more complex than it is. Ultimately, what's happening with chord naming, chord symbology, is it's it's getting the shorthand is the you know the quickest way you can write something the better. Um, but there are times where there's two names for something like C11. I, again, I would play C11 as B flat over C. I would play a B flat triad and put a C in the bass. If I happen to put a G in there or, what, or if I can find a way to get the D in there, then great. I mean, I'm sorry, the E in there, great. But otherwise, it's, I'm just going to play B flat over C. That's basically what they want. Um, and a lot of ways to do that. Uh, so, but yeah, it's, it's ultimately pretty, uh, you know, the goal is to, to make it a little bit less rules and quicker uh, understanding. So I hope that helps. Anyway, thanks, Max. Oh, <laughs> Max, you were there earlier, right? You were here way earlier. And also, thanks, David, for the coin and, and everybody for the, for, the, for the love. I really appreciate that, the financial love uh, that helps. And um, the wedding's paid for, so now that's going into... Let's see, what should that go into? I want to get a Fender Jaguar, so uh, that'll go into the Fender Jaguar fund. How about that? <laughs> it's going to be a lot cheaper than a wedding because I'm not going to buy a vintage one. I don't need a vintage one. But anyway, everybody, God bless you. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Bruce and Holly. I uh, hope Dennis is okay. Dennis wasn't here, right? I never saw Dennis. Or am I just forgetting? 
No, I don't see Dennis. But um, we'll uh, pick up next week. I'm not sure what we'll do next week. Maybe more of this. I, I, I don't know. I, I'll try to remember that we want to do the kind of the embellishing. i got to find a good name for that so we can put it in the title. But, um, yeah, have a great week. And, uh, Holly, uh, you're in your eating time, so eat up. <laughs> i got, I got to wait till 3.30 my time. So, so, yeah, but that's fine. And they're feeding us at church, so...